Tis the season to leave things in eggnog. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Today we're getting wrist deep in some month old eggnog. You know, the classic holiday drink that tastes like an undercooked omelet and smells like Santa's farts. I'm a fan. Well, in concept, I agree. I mean, it lets you drink your breakfast for dinner, mm. but also get a buzz at the same time. So in practice though, I believe it's quite nasty. And uh, that means leaving it out for a month is probably not gonna help because that yeah. is exactly what we did for holiday science. So let us now head to the spooky shelf that we leave things on, which we call the shelf that we leave things on. Please welcome back our friend Mike McCarg from the Cozy Robot Show. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good. It's going good. Look man. at this version 2.0. He's uh, animatronic or whatever the word is. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, he's still he's been robotic the whole time. Okay, Mike. He's will right you, here. Will you do the honor? They've done Coke, bleach, air, Guinness, salt, pool water, nail polish remover, mouthwash, champagne, shamrock shakes, and Irish whiskey, a 93 Infinity G20, margaritas, dirt, wine, glow sticks, citric acid, Red Bull, eggs, Febreze, coffee, pumpkin beer, and hot sauce. But today, they're shaking things up in an egg-siding way. It's eggnog time. Ah. <laughs> it's time for Left on a Shelf Eggnog Edition. We're gonna guess what happened to things the mythical crew left in eggnog for a month. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's all gonna be so pleasant. It's gonna smell real good. Oh, you got your smell of vision going? I am thrilled to say that I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I think these right here are smellers. We're gonna be piping in the smells to you. Yes. Um, for those of you who, who haven't had the pleasure, eggnog is a beverage made from eggs, milk or cream, spices, mm. vanilla, and sometimes spiked with a little bit of holiday cheer. Boo! Yeah. Uh, but we're gonna be tasting virgin eggnog. Actually, we're not gonna be tasting this at all. <laughs> I don't know, I get in this yeah, mode. please do not, that could go very badly. Yeah, 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 After yeah. a month, we're not gonna taste it, but it's still virgin. There's virgin. Uh, if we don't get more than three right, we're gonna have to drink a full glass of thick, non-aged, gluggy eggnog uh, throughout Good Mythical More. Uh, and I don't wanna do well, that. Well, I mean, I actually kinda think eggnog is okay, but after what I'm about to experience, I do not want a glass of it. Mike, do you like eggnog? I love eggnog. Oh, okay. It's one of well, my favorites. All right, so, we'll so there's a right, little bit of a tension We're gonna put it right in your horn. In our motives. First up, we left a piece of eggplant and some sliced ham and eggnog for a month. Which one totally shriveled up like my capacity to pay attention in a conversation if I happen to receive a text message? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. Egg shriveled up. Or the sliced ham. Now, I mean, if you if you were to feel feel of this, mm -hmm. you can see how how it's it's very foamy. Yeah, almost like mm. you can make a loofah out of it. So it feels like there's a, sh a high shrivel capacity to yeah. eggplant. But if you feel of this, oh, you could even cut it with your with your pizza cutting hand. I mean, when's the last time you fondled some sliced ham? Well, then, then <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> very recently for me. All right, uh, Mike. What, what, very what, what, slimy, but very but very dense. What's I your would... educated guess here? It's incredibly difficult. Again, like the eggnog is mostly water uh, because it's mostly milk. Milk is slightly, 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 slightly basic. You know, I think what we're gonna see is probably some shriveling on the eggplant, just because of rotting. I think it's just gonna rot in the eggnog. Eggplant in eggnog, that is our answer. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, a lot of cur oh. curdling. So both of them have spoiled. All right, uh, you open that one, I'll open this one. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, I can look at the ham and tell just you that it's not it. shriveled. Science. Oh! God. oh. Oh, there was a fizz. There, there's pressure in there because of a. Uh, so, yeah. what you're seeing is anaerobic decomposition. Bacteria have had to do what they do without a supply of oxygen. No, and Mike. So, you have some truly nauseous chemical byproducts from that process. No, Mike, what you're actually seeing is a dude unable to open a jar. Okay. But unwilling to that ask ham, for help. That ham's in good shape, actually. Son of a. All right, I've done all the hard work, I've loosened it. Okay. <sighs> Oh gosh, room. that is nasty. <laughs> Can't be done. <laughs> well done. 
run rat. <sighs> oh, it stinks so bad. What? Uh, here, it's a shriveled eggplant. I can't even smell it, and I am grossed out. Oh gosh, the way it just—it kind of smells like a cheese factory. If you if you if you get it in the right place in your like <sighs> library of smells, it actually yeah. is not horrible. It's it not just horrible. smells like really 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 strong but, cheese. But why did it turn as pink as the as the ham? That is wild. I think the skin, the purple skin of the eggplant, right. has leached through into the fruit body. We were right. <laughs> Let's move on. I use words like fruit body when Mike's around. We eggnogged the Cadbury egg in its wrapper and also some Ghirardelli peppermint bark Ooh, in its good, wrapper. That's a good thing. Right? Uh, so, which items foil packaging Ooh, swelled up like my hemorrhoids when I stayed on the toilet to finish watching Emily in Paris. <laughs> oh. Is it the Cadbury egg or the peppermint bark foil? Well, I mean, Swell again, up. my non-scientific, just layman's perspective is that this is not sealed. The Cadbury egg wrapped. is just wrapped, right. but this is sealed, so it's gotta be the one that can actually hold some pressure. But Mike, what's you agree with that? It to build up? This is your greatest risk of foodborne illness of anything you've left on a shelf so far. <laughs> so just everybody be yeah. really careful. So the make Chase do should everything. Be shelf stable. It shouldn't be rotting in its package unless there's been some intrusion, like uh, the glue is broken down from being wet that long. At which point I could see it kind of getting puffy. The Cadbury cream eggs packaging is not airtight, but if the egg itself for some reason is swelling, then you could see that happen. But I can't imagine a mechanism of action for either. It feels like the ingredients in a Cadbury cream egg have more capacity to do th than just the peppermint bark, right? Yeah. So That's we, what it seems like to me as well. We're going with the we're egg. We're going with the egg. But this is, I have no confidence in this. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's right here on top. Okay, so we're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to tell <laughs> so immediately nasty. if that thing has swollen up at all. And then, I, don't I think, think you that. might have to pour out the Cadbury egg. Fine. There okay. It goes. They look exactly the same. The eggs they didn't change exactly at all. I, th I think. I think. I think we failed. You're telling me that these things pillowed out? Oh, they did. Look at that. That thing is. Look at it. Is. Can you see how big that is? Yeah, it's huge. Can we do an autopsy? Can we? Uh... Yeah, we we have to. Uh, get the get the um, yeah, get the scissors. I'm gonna pop this thing. Fascinating. And peppermint bark is really shelf stable. Yeah, it's an, look, the peppermint bark is untouched. It's simply air expanded inside there, but the peppermint bark looks as if it just came right off of the shelf. Look at that. Yeah, it did. Nothing happened to it. It just puffed it up. I don't even have a theory. So like, it, there's a negative, so what happened is the same thing that happens in, in a chip bag when the, you know, when you go up in altitude and the pressure uh, decreases on the outside. So how did that the happen? Pressure to... did it decrease? <laughs> That's what confuses me. Let's just move on and forget this ever happened. It's a we holiday it mystery. <laughs> Quick reminder: go over to the Mythical Kitchen channel and check out Mythical Chef Josh recreating fast food items in exorbitantly expensive. Versions. Yeah, that's one way to describe We're it. We're spending lots of money and making some expensive stuff over there. Check it out, Mythical Kitchen Channel. Okay, the Mythical crew left coal in eggnog for a month, and apparently they have been holding on to some dead bugs the past few months, leaving the same uh -huh. exact bugs, the same bugs, in Febreze for a month, then coffee, then pumpkin beer, then hot sauce, and now eggnog. It's a dead bee and a dead beetle. They've been okay? they've been through the ringer, but not nothing Nothing has happened. happened. And apparently, either something happened now, or nothing happened, and they just want to talk about the bee. Right. So between the coal and the bugs, which one smells just completely stinking awful, like a Subway sandwich shop? <laughs> <laughs> they do smell weird. Yeah, I mean, they, they really do. But it's a little bit of a nostalgic smell. Uh, you know what else is nostalgic? You want, you know, and uh. it's it's the holiday season. I thought I might take it up a notch oh. and give you. Oh, well, you really took it up a notch. I missed a little, but oh, thank you. Yeah, look at that. Just deliver. You're deliberating. Mm. You know, this should help. Help with the deliberation. The funny thing is, Link. You know, because of the holidays, I had the same exact idea. Same exact same. idea. Yeah. How's that creamy egg? 
Mm. Oh, and Mike, I don't want you to feel left out because, you know, you're here and it's the holidays, so. Straight down the house. Mmm. <laughs> how, how, how is it? <laughs> We're like Pixar up in here. The eggnog. <laughs> The eggnog already stinks. So I think we're being asked for a unique terrible smell. I don't yeah. see how adding a small bit of biological matter is going to change a fundamentally biological process. So I think from elimination, something unexpected is going to happen with the coal. All wow. right, we're saying coal. The coal, we're going to have some, I'm not stank, argue some with that. stanky coal? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I mean, I think they're both going to smell terrible. <laughs> it's just... Does the coal change the quality of the terrible smell? Okay, so these are our bugs. Oh my gosh, what? Oh, the the bug is is attached. Look. No, this is the coal. Yeah, the bug is attached right there. They're attached to the top. They don't smell good. It's all gonna smell horrible unless like some weird activated carbon effect kicked in and Oh, you know what? The coal made it smell like regular eggnog. What? Like uh, it doesn't smell. Activated carbon. Yeah, take it just take that. It. It's it just smells like almost like nothing. Actually, we were going for the coal because it all, nearly made Chase vomit last week when he opened the the control. So I don't mm. know what has happened in that period of time. No, okay, I'm not joking, Chase. But I'm thankful. Something might be wrong with your nose or potentially with that particular one that you tested. Let's talk about the important thing. Oh, that's I'm stinks. incredibly high on whipped cream fumes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike. I mean, we we already lost. We're gonna have to uh, enjoy some eggnog and give us a little more. <laughs> which uh, I don't know. It depends on if, it's, if 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 that was your desired outcome. So be it. But let's just do this one just because it's here and and for Christmas science. Yeah, Christmas science. Yeah, we put a salted duck egg, which uh, apparently is a duck egg that's been brined for weeks. Mm. So. Mm. It's been left in salt water for weeks, and then it's been left in eggnog for a month. Oh, it got better. Also a salt lick, you know, for the deer. Which one will I be able to easily open, like a credit card in Nana's name? <laughs> <laughs> you still got that credit card in Nana's right, name? All right, so, so can I open the jar, which I've already determined that uh, I have a difficult time with that. Is it the salted duck egg or the salt lick? Okay, so... Obviously, the ones where there's been some sort of more fermentation and a pressure has increased, it's harder to open, right? So the egg is much more likely to have something ferment, where the salt is going to, isn't that going to counteract the process? No, the salt is, in fact, likely to have more of a counteracting effect. Like we saw with the coal, salt is a preservative. That's a lot of salt, so it's going to reach kind of the maximum salinity possible for that solution. I would expect you're right, Rat. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so we are going with the But I've egg. been wrong, like, multiple times. Yeah, today, you, so. yeah man, you, I, you man, haven't I, been that helpful today. And I've been wrong quite a bit. I, I'm going to go with the salt lick. I'm okay. going against both of you guys because nothing's at stake anyway. Right, this is just, just, this to, is, this just is for, for pride. This is for me to get a moment. Well, only one way to find out. Well, I, and I've got to say, if we did, you know, 20 jars, would you consistently find that one of these was more difficult to open than the other? I'm not sure that would be the case. Well, okay, let me uh, make an observation. This the one. pressure buildup in the one on the left, it's built up so much that it actually completely broke the seal. So all bets oh, are yeah. off at this point. All right, so I'll start with the salt lick. Oh, that was oh. easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was right, guys. Eat that. You were wrong. I said the salt lick. We said the one that would be hard. We said the salt lick. We said the one that would be hard to open is the egg, and the one that would be easy egg. to open. Well, you didn't, yeah. you didn't answer the right question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we all agreed. We agreed. All right, yeah, I can't open this. Oh, I just opened it. Because in between, oh, I got a little spray on my hand. Uh, in between, oh my gosh. Look, there's it, so it, it's much. starting to ooze through. There's so much that happened over there. Oh gosh, that's revolting. Okay, so I mean. Ah, oh, look at that cheese. So this one shouldn't smell bad though, the salt one. I mean, oh. I don't think it's gonna smell like a spray there, day. There's mold on top. It smells crazy like totally different than everything else that we Whoa. Have smelled. like what is happening that is we it's i think it's it's you're smelling mold it doesn't smell like anything else it looks like brains look at that look at you see the top of that okay and that we didn't win we're gonna have to drink the eggnog 
In the meantime, you should check out Mike's show, The Cozy Robot Show on YouTube. It's also available as a podcast. And you can also catch him in a brand new series, Rhett and Link Ask Mike, over on the Mythical Society. That's right. We also left Link's glasses in eggnog for a month. Huh. So that's where those have been. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. Now you say you know what time it is. You know what time it is. I'm Denise. And I'm Eileen. And we're riding the ice carousel on Tolman Pond in beautiful Nelson, New Hampshire. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. I had no idea what was happening. Until, ice carousel. So the whole piece of ice is slowly moving. All right, click the top link to watch us have some scientific fun with eggs and good mythical lore. And to find out where the world of mythicality is gonna land.